Well, this is our live today with the lovely Lisa Ventura. Lisa's joining us from the um, Cybersecurity Association or the UK Cybersecurity Association. And this is a bit of a special because we're going to be, coming, we're going to be covering some really important stuff um, from basic scams that are running now um, that you need to keep your eye on and also processes that we need to be putting in place, whether you're a small, medium or large business. Um, but I'll let you introduce yourself, Lisa. Hi, Christian. Hi, Hi everyone. Uh, my name's Lisa. I'm from the uh, UK Cybersecurity Association, and we're a um, trade association that deals specifically with um, individuals and small businesses, companies, etc., that work within cybersecurity within the UK and also um, across the globe as well. Lovely. Good. So what we're going to cover today, I'm just going to break them down. We're going to look at mm -hmm. the current COVID-19 cyber scams and fraud that are in place, um, managing your cybersecurity in this ever-changing environment, inside of threats, um, the return to the office and the things that should be considered for that, and the importance of cyber security awareness programs. Um, I mean, let's just get stuck in. If there's anybody on there that's, that's uh, obviously got questions as well, throw them down this is this is a the more questions we have the more fun the show is the more you can uh, learn from lisa and hopefully um come away a bit more enlightened Cybersecurity is a massive thing obviously um there are a lot of uh, threats at the moment out there especially people that are uh, utilizing the covid19 pandemic um do you want to just run through some of the things that we've seen already lisa Sorry, I can't hear you. Can can hold on, Lisa? We can't hear you at the moment. Can you, there we go. Can hear you again. <laughs> Sorry, technical hitch there. Um, <laughs> so when the uh, outbreak first happened, around right about February, March, beginning of this year, there was a big move to get employees set up and working from home very quickly, and there was a huge rush to get that to happen and to get them set up um, as quickly as possible without, I suppose, really stopping to think about the security ramifications around that. And at the same time, um, a lot of fraudsters were um, picking up on the COVID-19 outbreak and using it um, as, a, as a not very nice opportunity. Um, and some of the things that uh, we started to see really, really quickly, um, and some of these may be more sort of not just on the business side, but on the personal side of things, um, a lot of fraudsters were starting to um, get uh, websites up that um that, that was selling fraudulent goods or or covid19 tests and so on that um that, that obviously were, were, were fraudulent um and we're getting uh payments in for non-existent pandemic services um they were also um setting up a lot of emails um to impersonate um the nhs the world health organization and so on um, with the express aim of trying to get personal information, access to bank account details, um, et cetera. And there were even a lot of holiday cancellation scams um, going around via email. So if you can imagine you'd got a holiday you know, booked, you didn't know what was going to happen with that holiday, whether it was going to go ahead or whether the flights were, were going to happen, et cetera. Um, and then these emails would, would come up saying, you yeah, know, we can help you get your money back and pay us a small fee to do it. Those were all fraudulent and, and scam emails. So a massive, massive increase in those kinds of things. And also with um, phishing emails, um, trying to get you to give away your personal information or your bank account um, details. So that's been the, um, the, the biggest thing that we've seen in the COVID-19 outbreak. And how do people, how do people recognize these as phishing scams? Um, essentially a bank would never ask you for your information over surely that's that's absolutely right so um the, a, a lot of the um the things that you can do to spot a, a phishing email some of them can take different forms as i mentioned so um alerts from the world health organization where cyber criminals were sending these phishing emails designed to look um exactly like some of the emails that you would get sent from um, the world health organization perhaps falsely claiming to link to a list of coronavirus cases in your area um, and advising you to click on that link to look at it if you hover over that link with with a mouse nine times out of ten there'll be a string of very funny characters or something that just doesn't 
look quite right about it or they might try to replicate the domain name of the um, World Health Organization. They can't obviously do that. So there might just be a rogue character or something that's that will just give it away. Never click on on, on those kind of um, kind of emails. So um, look at the spelling as well and the grammar and the tone that's used in that email. A lot of the time, especially if it's written by you know some cyber criminals that don't have English as their first language, that can also be quite a giveaway. Um, in fact, it, it, not even related to, to COVID, but just the other day, I had one myself that was so convincing. At first glance, I looked at it because it said it came from the TV licensing. And because it coincided with the time of year that my TV license is due for renewal, it really was con convincing, even for somebody like me. They are getting so sophisticated now. Um, it, 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 spotting it is 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 almost just a full time thing. But knowing all of my training, stop, hover over that link. Sure enough, a string of really odd characters quickly um, deleted and and uh, rendered it to spam. So always be really vigilant when looking out for those sort of things on any emails that you're you're not sure of. Um, any emails that come that pertaining to be from your bank, from PayPal, any of those as well. Check the links check the the grammar the spelling make be really certain before you click on anything because it can install some really nasty malware onto your system i have seen um i mean they are they they amaze me sometimes how how they how well they cover off their branding and things like that yeah. um the one that i've had recently is saying that netflix subscription and netflix has frozen my payment or whatever and, and frozen yeah. my account um, and there's obviously a link to click on, but you know that would yeah. that, you get yeah, text or something, and and obviously when you look at it further. But when you look at these things, what can we do after that? Is, there, is it just adding it to spam, or is there someone we can forward this email on to? Um, yeah, yeah. There's um, a, if it's your bank or PayPal or any of those, they do have special departments you can forward them on to, so they can get them stopped. Um, also, the Information Commissioner's Office, although they seem to be um, going down a bit at the moment because of the COVID-19 outbreak and not doing so much, um, and having some really good, robust anti-spam and um, antivirus software on, on your computer that will pick up a lot of that. So the TV licensing one, for example, was flagged up as spam, but even so, because it said TV licensing, I thought, oh, is this spam by mistake? It absolutely wasn't. My antivirus had done the exact job it was supposed to do, picked it up and highlighted the fact that it was um, spam emails. And you and your ISP might be able to help as well, your internet service provider, and they might be able to help with um, getting getting some settings in place to stop a lot of these come up to you in the first place. But still, some can get through the net and, and end up in your, your inbox because they are getting just so sophisticated these days and what they do. Uh, sure. Um, and what's it like, moving on to the next point, because it kind of, mm. my next question is going to cover that a bit. When we were talking about our work emails, the threats are obviously, mm. that if you get the link, you might have some malware on your on your um, computer, or they're just looking for your bank details to, to obviously steal from you. Um, but how, what, what are the things that people need to be putting in place now when they're managing their cybersecurity from a business point of view, with these people that are working from home um, mm -hmm. who may be susceptible to these sort of emails? Yeah. Uh, the National Cybersecurity Centre has got a really good um, 10 steps to cybersecurity program, which is absolutely superb for small businesses and SMEs and gives some really good advice and things you can do. And I'll just go through some of the points. And if anybody would like a, a copy of this um, slide, which details those points, I'd be more than happy to um, to share it out. So um, just some of the 10 steps are things like look at your network security. So protect your networks, um, defending your perimeters and filtering out any unauthorized um, access or malicious content. And that goes into the, um, the insider threat um, that you mentioned earlier, which I can go into um, about a bit later. Um, having um, protection for malware, so some really good um, malware protection as part of your antivirus and um, anti-spam uh, software that you have. Um, being really careful about any removable media controls, so USB sticks and things like that, and making sure that they're fully scanned 
um, before you introduce them into your system and so on. Um, and also being really careful about having your employees introduce these um, small devices or USB um, sticks um, because they can transmit some um, files, et cetera, that could damage your systems. Um, having a really strong, secure configuration. So as I mentioned earlier, patching um, and keeping up to date the latest versions of software and, and so on, so that um, hackers can't get through to um, any software that's that's not patched. Um, managing your user privileges as, as well. So making sure that your employees have only got the level of user access um, that they need. So if they don't need admin access, don't give it to them um, and so on. Um, monitoring um, your, your systems and having a strategy in place for, for that and having supporting um, policies. So if your employees are bringing their own devices, for example, having a strong policy you know, around that and introducing those devices um, to your office and business is, is critical. Um, and also having, a, especially more so with the COVID-19 outbreak, having a really good, strong remote working policy. And I've got some um, tips I'll go through on that in a, in a bit as well specifically for that um, and what about smaller businesses i mean that's really helpful that is that mm. and if if you share that with us as well we'll put it out yeah. on the isolation network to be able to yeah um guess that those 10 steps you have um what about smaller businesses as well where they might just be their digital may just cover their website and their socials yeah um, so so there's a few steps that, that they can undertake, um, things like making sure that they protect all their devices and systems with a robust antivirus um, solution, um, updating programs and their operating systems, um, ensuring that their Wi-Fi encryption is fully configured, um, ensuring that their router password and logging details is updated and changed um, on a regular basis, um, using a VPN if you connect to any Wi-Fi networks outside of, of, of the home, so, um, or having a Citrix gateway or, or something like that. And this is, even working from home, this is a, a one that you might not expect, but ensuring your device is locked before you walk away from it, because someone can catch a glimpse of anything you might be working on that might be confidential, um, even if you just leave your desk for a moment to go and have a cup of tea um, or a bathroom break. So just that sort of control, lock, delete, lock your screen, um, making sure that that's all password protected um, as, as well. Um, and also make sure that you use your corporate services for email messaging and any other work. So having that gateway set up, that VPN and everything going through that, that's um, that, that's to do with your business and, and your corporate um, corporate world. And what, what is it we're protecting ourselves from? What are, the, what are the threats that are out there at the moment? We talked about phishing, but what else is out yeah. there? Uh, Ransomware is another big one at the moment. So cyber criminals that can gain access um, to your systems and then send you an email saying that they've got access and you would want you to pay a ransom either in Bitcoin or something like that to get access back to, to your systems. That's a huge one at the moment. Um, gathering, pers gathering personal information um, via unsecured networks, um, passwords, having a good robust um, password management system perhaps consider using something like LastPass to store all your passwords um, to different sites um, in, in there or another um, password management system. That's another key thing is, as well. And changing and updating your password regularly and never having something like password as your password. Um, and I've seen so many instances of that. It's, uh, it's incredible. And actually last year, there was a list of all the most common um, types of passwords that, that people are using. And there was some you know, huge shockers in there and certain football teams and all sorts of, of, of things. Um, and with your passwords as well, always having um, some strong characters, so capital letters, um, characters, um, et cetera, just to make it that much more stronger and robust. You know what I often find with people is they, <laughs> they have their email that are sort of from childhood, you know, from their mm. teens or whatever. Yeah. And they, they still have those sort of things, whether it might be a Hotmail account or something like that, and that's still on their mm -hmm. phone, but they haven't really changed it and they haven't used no. it since they were, you know, finished uni or something like that, and since they've had a professional email. Um, and yet it's still there. It's full of thousands of unread emails. And they 
I don't understand that that's actually that's their weak link right now in terms yeah. of um what are the ways of getting onto their onto their phone yeah absolutely so yeah i just got a bit of a lag here i can't see if i'm if i'm talking or um <laughs> but we mentioned we mentioned insider threats as well mm. we're gonna we're gonna move on to insider threats because we talked yeah. about the outside threats um but what, what's the things to consider for staff working from home um certainly especially if you've got if they've got access to company data and so on making sure that all their systems and controls are in place there's been a huge rush as well of um, equipping them not to work on their own equipment but the company laptops so there's been a big rush on you know a shortage of laptops when this first happened around about march april time because companies were mm -hmm. buying up a lot to get their staff fully operational and working from home really quickly um so again they're making sure that they're configured properly password protected got all the things that i talked about earlier um to make sure that it, it covers um any confidential data um that they might be working on so is that and have you been very active in that obviously yeah. is that trying to surely you've you've covered the, yeah. the hump of that initial work and everybody's now working efficiently from home nice and yeah smooth, yeah really. Absolutely. And a lot more um, companies are now starting to take cybersecurity a lot more seriously in the in, in the light of this. Um, so I've been doing a lot more in terms of cybersecurity awareness and training programs, which, again, I can come on to with in, in a bit about how to train your staff to be a lot more cyber aware. Yeah, and it's a trend that we've seen across the board. I mean, this, this lockdown has essentially been a catalyst for people to move into all sorts of um, things that they needed to or, or focus on things that they should have been focusing on maybe a bit before but it was getting pushed mm. back a bit and cybersecurity yeah. has to be one of the forefront i mean i was amazed that you have been in cybersecurity cell for 10 years mm. won these amazing awards and founded yeah. uh, the uk cybersecurity association mm. and that there wasn't yeah. something that unified everybody yeah. in this industry before i mean it's 10 mm. how long have we been moving to across to digital and and cybersecurity being at the forefront of what needed to be considered yeah um, and yet here we were yeah i mean there's a lot of groups and a lot of offshoots and certainly all the cyber clusters across the uk um they're an operational and the malvin cyber security cluster was one of the first ones which was one of the ones i was involved with as a founder member um back in the day gosh 2011 um 2012 so it's quite a quite getting on to be quite a long time time ago um cyber security center is set up to cover the, the the uk and gchq obviously do a lot of work um but there just wasn't that sort of one place where individuals and companies could go to join um to look at being a lot more you know cyber aware finding out about the latest threats and, and information and and so on um and i just spotted that gap i thought this, i've got to do something and get that that in place so that, that that's where that idea came from years or so ago and if anybody has any questions for these, uh, please check them down. We, we'd be happy to answer them, or at least try. Um, so please get involved. I mean, in Lisa's experiences here, from you to utilize. We've talked about the insider threats working from home. We've talked about how people have got over that hump now. They've implemented the systems they need, yeah. and it seems we may just start to come out of lockdown. Um, mm. And over the next sort of six weeks, I, I expect we're going to see a different, a different environment again. What what do we need to be thinking about as we return to the office? Um, I'm not too sure whether the return to the office is slightly premature at the moment. I've been following a lot of things in Business Continuity Awareness Week this week that's taking place, and the return to the office was quite high up on the agenda in a lot of the um, discussions I've been involved in. However, a lot of organisations are either taking the move to consider home working forever twitter for example have um said that they're going to do that um mm -hmm. and some of the universities are considering not restarting face-to-face -face lectures until next year as opposed to yeah. now so yeah. i think the return to the office is going to be quite slow having said that as it starts to happen reintroducing those laptops and systems back into the office environment um is, is critical and making sure that 
nothing's introduced that shouldn't be um that there's no data on there that could be compromised and so on so it departments need to look at those, those systems as they're coming back in and as things are being reintroduced and as devices are being reintroduced um making sure that those systems are, are, are fine to be reintroduced without in, without getting any malware or phishing or anything like like that through the systems okay, so we're talking about coming back in batch processes in terms yeah. of the tech being reintroduced back in it's yeah. probably going to um fit what's going to happen anyway because as we adhere to certain social distancing yeah. rules i'm sure people will be coming back in batches um, yeah. anyway so it hopefully it will allow that we're not going to see big backlogs of tech needing to get clearance before it yeah. can be um, utilized again yeah um with, with that in mind, I mean, it obviously, it's driven home the need for cybersecurity now. Everybody's understood with 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 a big impact. They've understood the um, the threats that are out there as people start to work from home. But with that in mind, now, what's the importance of cybersecurity programs going forward? I, certainly, for me, user education and awareness in any size of business is absolutely key. And I think starting with training your employees to be a lot more cyber aware and what to look out for is crucial to stopping a lot of it ha happening at source. You're never going to stop everything. The hackers are always one step ahead and things change by the day. The scams change by the day. The phishing emails change by the day. New and more sophisticated ones come in. In fact, I say by the day, I, I'd probably go as far as to say practically every hour there's some new one or new thing. And you know, all all systems and all software need to be up to date to be able to, you know, to, to deal with that and stay that that one step ahead. So I've done a lot of work with educating, um, especially in professional services, getting employees just thinking about cybersecurity, thinking about password complexity, thinking about phishing email. So I've done a lot of phishing email simulation exercises. Um, I've deployed a lot of cyber escape room um, training programs, um, just really getting staff thinking all the time about, does this look right? Does it not look right? Reporting it if it doesn't. Um, and also not being fearful if something did get through the cracks and it went wrong, being able to report it without the fear of ramifications as well. That, mm -hmm. that's that's really important yeah. that's a fair point to make yeah um where, where can people go to learn this stuff where can you obviously it's going to become a lot more important the awareness mm. of it is going to increase but where can they go yeah uh, the national the national cyber security center which is ncsc.gov.uk has a lot of information and easy to follow guides and so on cyber security association website that i run which is cybersecurityassociation.co.uk also has a lot of how-to guides and um, useful information that businesses can find and download and, and so on to help them be more cyber aware. Um, and there's lots and lots of information on you know, social networks, people to follow, et, et cetera, that are all providing really good, strong, um, robust cyber advice. And what do we think this is going to do to the to businesses and culture of business? Do you think cybersecurity is going to come become more entrenched in the culture? Do you think we're going to see sort of monthly meetings or or more regular workshops, that sort of thing, to keep people updated and upskilled around it all? I'm I'm, I'm definitely seeing a lot more in terms of um, training events, workshops, um, cyber escape rooms is quite popular. Capture the flag events, things like that. Th activities that really get you know staff in, in, you know, involved and interacting with each other and you know thinking about all the different ways they can be a lot more cyber secure is, is is something I'm seeing a lot of as well. And I think that will eventually start to filter through to organisations with the move to work from home. That's obviously been a big thing of getting people thinking more about their cybersecurity awareness and, and so on. Yeah, because um, it's going to have to, isn't it, really? Because how are you going to keep mm. people, how are they going to be able to look after your equipment without mm. keeping them aware of the threats to it? And even, yeah. even aside from if you've got all the security systems in place to keep your system protected, you still don't want to lose that piece of equipment you've just paid for yeah. and have to have the downtime on it and all that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so I, I certainly think um, that that it's gonna it's gonna become a bit more part of the of the business culture moving forward. Yeah. Um, 
we've had we've had some comments come through shared lots mm. of groups hi linda hi Gemma. <laughs> Hi, George. George is online, online now. Cyber escape rooms. Sweet, <laughs> George. Um, if, everybody, if anybody has any questions now, now's your time to ask. We've got, um, yeah, we've got seven people on now. If you all if you'll give us a like and share as well, we might actually reach more and get more people on and get the questions going. Um, but, yeah, I mean, just to, just to summarise what we've spoken mm -hmm. about, we've covered phishing, emails and the scams and frauds mm -hmm. that are out there at the moment around um, uh, the pandemic and what people have done to capitalize on it and try and steal people's money, steal their bank mm -hmm. details, essentially. Mm -hmm. We've looked at the, the ever-changing cybersecurity environment, the insider threats as people are working from home, um, the return to the office and what that might look like, however far down the line it may be, um, and the report the importance of cybersecurity programs now. Mm -hmm. I don't, if, what, if you had to summarize one thing for any business leader out there now, three, well, let's say three things that they have to be thinking about if they haven't already considered it, what would they be out of your 10? What are the top priorities that are then going to lead on to the other areas? I'd say definitely having their systems configured to deal with um, phishing emails, malware, so strong antivirus, VPNs, definitely, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. to protect corporate data. Um, and training your staff to be a lot more cyber aware and stopping it at, at, at source would be the three key things. And for somebody that might not be doing that at the moment, that first point mm. of bringing in mm. VPNs, where mm. would they go to do that? What, what's a credible, trusted um, place to start? Um, I, there's a, a myriad of different ones out, out there, but Citrix are, are, are really good. Um, we do a diff, lot of different ones. Um, and actually, I've got a document of about 10 different good providers. So if anybody wants to um, to have sight of that, I'd be happy to circulate that around. Yeah, that would be lovely. And please share it with mm -hmm. us. We'll put that out yeah. on the, the Isolation blog as well and, mm -hmm. and point people back to the UK cybersecurity. Yep because it is such mm. an important thing at the moment i mean that we've talked about the phishing scams and the scams of people that are um trying to get your bank details we've talked about mm. ransomware scams but just the fact that people are just back there in the background and may have already hacked you and is watching your data you mm. know you haven't really touched on that but that's that's a threat in itself and the this the the threats that have grown because people are working from home i think today's today's call has been really um, mm show has been really important so thank you so much for coming on Lisa. No problem. Uh, Gemma's no asked what security software should we have on our computers? Um, again there's a myriad of different ones um, out there. I, I use McAfee that's been absolutely brilliant for me. Um, Kapersky is another really good one to, to have a look at and alongside the list of the VPN ones I've got a, 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 a blog as well with different ones that I can share if anybody wants to see that. Yeah, right. thank you. Um, is there any more questions? We, we, is there anything else that we want to ask Lisa while we're here today? Otherwise, I think we'll we'll probably start to wrap up. Unless there's anything yeah. you want to add, Lisa, any final message? Um, just a couple of, of, of things just around the, um, the, the scam side of things. Even the um, furloughing job retention scheme has seen a huge increase in the amount of phishing emails pertaining to, to the yeah. end. So... Yeah. Do if, if you are, they, are they being caught? Yeah, um, Google's actually taken down up to eighteen million malware and phishing emails. They're they're managing to stop and and, and block. Wow. Some are still getting through, but it's, it, it's a massive problem. Massive. Did you say eighteen million? Eighteen one eight eighteen million malware and phishing emails. So, um, Google yeah. reported that they're stopping. And how um, many do you think they're managing to stop? What sort so, of did you still getting through? <sighs> It, 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 it's it's difficult to say because they say they change all the time and the hackers are one step ahead all the time with creating these these ones and as i said earlier they look so convincing they they really do you know even to somebody like me that had to stop and go that tv licensing one i'm due for renewal no that doesn't look right check the links yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i think, I think that's careful. That, to resonate now anybody that's offering yeah sort of business funding loans or access to grants and things like that um unless it you know please check and go through the steps mm. that lisa has mentioned today yeah sure that that's coming from the right people yeah um, even even phone calls as well um there's a, a wi-fi provider cfas has seen an increase in the amount of fraudsters impersonating wi-fi providers 
ringing up businesses threatening to disconnect the customers if they don't pay a fee so yeah. even phone calls you know just be and, so careful and how is it that we know this that people are reporting this to the police yeah. and then and then the police are making you aware yeah reporting it via action fraud and the information commissioner's office and organizations like that so are they reporting it after they've yeah. been um hit by it i assume they're not they're not reporting it because they've they've seen it's happened to them and they've avoided it they're reporting it after it's happened yeah that's right that's yeah. awful isn't it it's and uh, do we know where these where are all of these people that are sending the emails come from do we know where they're they're sort of based are they are they bound by you know because I, I guess having an email means nothing you could just start yeah. another email at any point at any time yeah so how do you track these people down yeah, and the majority do, I have to say, do come from abroad. So it's even harder to um, to, to track those IP addresses down. Mm. Yeah. Stay vigilant, people. Keep yeah. your eye out there. Check the links. <laughs> check where they're coming from. Check the URLs. There might be a stray, stray um, character in there. There might be some random numbers, but obviously they mm. can't take the same URL. So always check where that email is coming from. Okay. No more, no more questions. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. It's been, it's been really okay. interesting, hugely important. Thank you so much for giving, yeah. giving us some of your time to share no your and experience. Um, if everybody wants to give some love hearts to Lisa for taking the time out, it'd be much appreciated. And uh, thank you. Hopefully we'll speak to you again, Lisa. Great. Thank you very much. And if anybody nice. wants to check Lisa out, it's UK yep. Cybersecurity Association. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Hi.